Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead, you can see behind me here, that we integrated Firebase into our Rick and Morty app. I did forget to mention, if you are just dropping in now, we have built an entire application this season, so go ahead and check it out. But we have uh, a variety of different endpoints that we interacted with here uh, from the free public Rick and Morty API. We do follow all the best practices as far as architecture and networking and all that stuff goes. So there's a lot to cover. Uh, the series has been pretty well received. So if you missed it, please go ahead and check it out. And if you missed the last episode, I'll put a card in the top right where I'll show you how we connected up our Firebase project here that we created uh, to the application that we have already built. And at the end of the last episode, I mentioned that we were going to go ahead and talk about Crashlytics here. So we're going to go ahead and just dive right into it. So as you can see here, Crashlytics is the most powerful yet lightest weight crash reporting solution. And this is true. It really is just a wonderful tool to have inside of your project here. So if we go ahead and enable Crashlytics, we literally just click the button. And now it says that it's waiting for our SDK. It's waiting for uh, our app to go ahead and crash. So not to pat myself on the back too much, but the app is pretty stable. So it's not all that easy to crash this at the moment. But what we can do here is we can actually cause a crash and that's probably the easiest way to test it. So inside of our uh, character list fragment here, this page here that we see, uh, when we click a particular character and whatnot, we get this callback or we invoke this function here. So instead of navigating, we can very easily say throw a runtime exception here and we will just give it the name or the title of, uh, nope, for Firebase, not for exception. Uh, and then we can go ahead and rerun things here. So basically anytime we click on a particular character, we're just gonna force a crash and we should be able to see something inside of Firebase now. So if we go ahead and flick back to it, uh, it is possible that we'll take a little bit of time for the crashes to happen in real time and then for them to show up in the Crashlytics dashboard here. So, uh, you know, just bear with me, I guess I'll cut it if it does take a little, a little while for it to come. But we'll go ahead and click on Morty Smith here. We see the app, of course, crashes. Um, I'll give it a few seconds here to see if Crashlytics kind of, you know, gets up to date. Maybe refresh the page here and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so it looks like we're still waiting for it here. So I'm going to go ahead and just probably jump cut to whenever we get the crash uh, inside of our dashboard here. Hey guys, coming back here real quick. Uh, I think I realized that we forgot or I forgot to add in the Crashlytics KTX here uh, library or implementation that we use from this bomb, uh, the whole Firebase platform and whatnot. So I don't think anything is going to come up here inside of uh, this until we have that added in. Uh, and we can click, quickly see this here at um, as part of the documentation and whatnot. So I'll link this page in the description, um, but it basically was just this little link that we go here, view the docs. So if we just go ahead and rerun things here, again, we still have our crash at this moment here for Firebase. And so then uh, we might be able to see this more so in real time here. So once this is up and running, we'll force the crash and we'll see what happens. Okay guys, here we are. So you can see that the application here has just crashed again. Uh, and we are seeing a little bit of a different dashboard here under our Crashlytics tab inside of Firebase. So um, this little section here will give you a complete overview of you know your um, crash-free users. And with just one user, it's going to be a little difficult. But as you start building out an app that starts to gain a little bit of traction, you'll start to see uh, exactly how many uh, users there are that are crash-free, maybe even peaks or valleys of a specific day or time uh, that the crashes were kind of occurring. So you know, you can just filter here by the different uh, days that you want, the date range or anything along those lines. And then, you know, down here, they'll give you a list of your different, uh, you know, crashes that you can actually click on here. And then it'll give you a little bit more information about the number of times it's occurred to how many different users, some device information here and uh, operating systems. And then you'll even get the stack trace here uh, for your particular crashes. So, you know, we can see here the exception is for Firebase. And if we just, you know, quickly pop back over to Android Studio, we can see here that that is what the, you know, error is caused or, or what we've put in there. Uh, we can see here, you know, on character selected at a particular line. And, you know, you can even see the breadcrumbs of how that code came to be. There's a whole bunch of other information here as far as keys and logs and data and all this kind of stuff that is, uh, you know, helpful for you along with a timestamp, the type of device and the 
version of your app and the operating system the device is running on. You know, so you can really just kind of pinpoint certain things here. Um, there's even ways to filter this stuff here. So actually, if we were to go back to the main dashboard, um, you can filter by version of the particular app, or you can even filter by event type here, crashes or non-fatal crashes. And then, you know, you get a pretty good synopsis here. It'll also start to show up in your project overview. Once you enable it, there'll be analytics again with just one user myself. It is one user in the last 30 minutes. It is, uh, you know, a little barren at the moment, but there should be, um, you know, there will be a little bit of a crash lytics dashboard that looks something like this somewhere in this page here as well. Uh, it's probably just a little too new or there's only one issue going on here. So uh, it hasn't come up yet, but as you can see here, crash lytics is um, really good and actually pretty quick as far as when it actually happened. Um, it probably wasn't any longer than 30 seconds after the crash happened on the device that it actually appeared here in um, the dashboard. There are a few other things I want to cover. Again, it is all in this documentation here that I will link in the description. But if we just quickly bounce over to Android Studio, um, there was not only this little implementation here that we needed to add, basically just the Crashlytics uh, library there. We also needed to add a particular plugin. And then even in our project build.gradle, there was another dependency that we needed to add here. Again, all of this is outlined in the documentation here that is in the description. So you literally just need to follow it, copy and paste it, put everything in and, and it starts to work. Uh, my apologies for kind of bouncing back and forth. I missed that a little bit, but that is uh, my fault and not yours. So outside of actual crashes here, uh, hard crashes, as I mentioned in the filter, there are another, or there is another event type here called non-fatals. You can go ahead and apply it and we clearly don't have any non-fatal issues here. But this is a way that you can essentially log something without crashing the app up to Crashlytics and it will appear here uh, you know, for your usage, however you need to use it. Maybe you're trying to debug an issue and so you're logging specific things along the way. You can do that here via Crashlytics. And so I think in the next episode here, we can actually go ahead and log some non-fatals here. I'm going to go ahead and just clear this uh, ridiculous crash out so that we don't constantly break the app here. Uh, but we can, you know, maybe log the character ID or something along those lines so that we can just get that information up to our uh, Crashlytics here. We can see it and then we can maybe make use of it, you know, in some other fashion. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. Uh, if you notice you are not subscribed, please do subscribe if you... Uh, have been enjoying the content and want to see more of what is to come. Let me know in the comments section if you found this helpful or useful. Like, give me any of your thoughts. Let me know how I'm doing. Crashlytics here, though, is basically a standard, basically a mandatory uh, addition to your application if you are going to push any kind of code to production because you really want to have insight into this, and it's just so simple. Over the last two episodes, we saw how, how easy it is to implement uh, Firebase and integrate it into our application. And then, as you saw here at Crashlytics, all we had to do was click a little button that said Enable It, add a few more dependencies, and when the app crashed, we got the perfect stack trace here. So obviously it is just a super powerful tool that building it yourself or trying to figure out a better way of doing it is just simply not worth your time, in my opinion. So Crashlytics is amazing, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.